Good night, it's Tuesday, Channel 95, 7 o'clock at night, and you are watching one more show of the Neighborhood News. And we are marching uh, and getting closer, closer to our fourth anniversary. Um, and again, I will always like to remember, if you are watching and it's not a Tuesday night, it's because you're watching a repeat show. Uh, so you can come back next Tuesday and we will have a brand new show for you um, to see. And I want to welcome the Portuguese community. Um, sejam bem-vindos para mais um programa de notícias da sua vizinhança. É terça-feira, canal 95, e estão uh, a ver e a escutar o programa Notícias da Sua Vizinhança. Um, nós estamos uh, com um convidado hoje e, como sempre, a Bernadette uh, está aqui comigo. Bernadette fala bem português, ela, ela pode também cumprimentar os nossos amigos portugueses. Boa noite a todos. <laughs> Um, and and we're back for one more show of the neighborhood news. Um, this um, show, uh, can we say it's the first show of the year? Because by the time it's going to air, it's going to be the first right. the first show of the year. You're right. Happy New Year. And Happy New Year for everybody. And uh, we have a, a, a guest um, on the studio with us uh, today. Um, as today, and it's going to be uh, announced, it's, it's city council elected, but when <laughs> you see this show, he will be really a city council. Yeah. But um, because we are taping the show before um, the first or the fourth, I believe that's when you guys that's get answered. Right. Yep. So, um, Cliff, thank you for uh, coming. Uh, I'm not going to say stopping by because I invited you to, to, mm -hmm. to come. Thank you for having me. And um, we're going to have, uh, uh, it's not, um, it's like a conversation pretty yeah. much. This That's what this show is about. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm happy Bernadette to be here. for sure. We'll have some questions for you. I will have some questions for you. Um, <coughs> and uh, we, um, we're going to pretty much spend half an hour together. And goes fast, believe me. Sure. <laughs> um, my first question for you is, I mean, we are going to talk about um, who, who Cliff Pont is because you explained uh, more, plenty of times during campaign mm -hmm. who Cliff Pont was and who was born in here and had his own business and, and all of that. So pretty much people voted for you, elected you uh, with a good amount of votes, we can say. So they pretty much know now who Cliff is. The first question that I would like to to, um, to ask you is uh, because I know you've been following the the city council meetings and and how city council has been um, making choices or voting in some in some issues and in some bonds and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. It's is any vote that was done by the old city council that you will l much love to be involved in get a vote for? Well, first off, thanks for having me on your program. I, I appreciate being invited. i um, looking forward to doing this uh, many more times within the next two years and beyond. Um, I'd like to take thank for the community media as well uh, for what they do for the community. Um, to answer your question, um, I've, always, uh, I've always been following politics for a long, long mm -hmm. time. Um, and I told the story on the campaign trail um, when I was very little my grandmother was actually the secretary to the city council oh, wow. uh, and I used to watch her at you know eight or nine years old or ten years old on TV uh, she was one of the clerks at the meetings mm -hmm. so I used to want to see my grandmother on TV as, as mm -hmm. a youngster right. uh, and uh, I started following politics really really young uh, and we joke, we were joking about it at my family uh, during the holidays about um, how when I used to sit in those city council seats as a, as a kid, mm -hmm. um, I used to say, boy, I'm going to sit in this seat one day. Yeah. You know, you and the seats haven't changed. They're the same seats, the same microphone, everything's still the same. And I'm very, very blessed to be. Uh, so we can say that you blame her today for being <laughs> city council. You know, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to it right now. Uh, blaming her, I, I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> call it that. Um, so I've been, I've been following politics for a long time. Mm -hmm. 
I've wanted to get involved for a very long time. Um, I needed to wait for the right time at, at the, this juncture of my life to make sure that I was prepared to do it. Um, I would have liked to have been a part of all the decision makings that have been going on in the City Council in the last 24 months. Um, but unfortunately, uh, I wasn't. Uh, but I'm looking forward to the, uh, the challenges that face the city uh, and being a part of some pretty tough decisions uh, that I think this city is going to, the, the council is going to be tasked to make within the next 24 months. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, to answer your question, is there one specific thing? Um, it, you know, I, uh, it, it, are we talking about the budget or are we talking about, you know, pay as you throw or... Or, or whatnot. Something uh, that uh, probably you <coughs> was something done that you that you in favor, sure. and, and and you will be voting if you were sitting. Well, if I was uh, so so, let's bring it back a bit. If I was um, a counselor at the last uh, during the last term, um, I, and if I was serving on the ordinance committee and on the city council, I would not have been in favor of the ten dollar fee. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would not have approved the budget in the way it was presented for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, granted, as a candidate and somebody paying attention to local government, I really wasn't, um, you know, I didn't have all the tools necessary to me that I'd be able to sit down with the administration right. and go over things um, such as, you know, my ideas and my thoughts mm -hmm. about what, what we should do to eliminate the fee. Mm -hmm. or the trash bags that have has never met its expectations or projections. Um, so I, I, I would have liked to have been a part of that and I would have voted no against it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, because the community clearly was not in favor uh, of the additional burden on the taxpayers. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely something I would have I, I would have liked to have at least expressed my concerns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the biggest concern, one of the biggest concerns to me always has been education. Mm -hmm. um, you know, w w the city council was tasked with approving the budget it, this fiscal year that we're currently serving in to um, meet 100% of net school spending. We didn't meet 100% of net school spending because we're relying on free cash right. to, to appropriate mm -hmm. at two different times of the fiscal year for net school spending. Mm -hmm. So if there's a tragic event that occurs in the city of Fall River mm -hmm. that we need to appropriate money out of our stabilization account to address a concern, what are you going to do with education? Right. You're not committing to meeting 100% of net school spending. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there was a series of concerns <laughs> and, and issues that I had with it, um, but uh, I guess that would be the topic. Yeah. Um, the issue of um, appropriating 100% um, is something that every city council and every resident in Fall River, every parent in Fall River wants to to make, uh, that's the goal that we want to do. But as a parent, as a taxpayer, before I want to approve that 100% tax uh, 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 money appropriation, I want to look at that budget. Mm -hmm. It's like going to the store, you're gonna, <coughs> you have two things to do the same job, you have a TV that costs five hundred dollars, and you have the same size TV costs two hundred dollars. So, you are gonna go for the cheaper? For the cheaper, because right. that's what, that's what you can uh, afford. So, what I'm trying right. to say is, but is it the right you want to keep do? but you want to keep your expenses low, Correct. but accomplish the same the same thing. Correct. Mm -hmm. And I think right now, uh, it doesn't make sense. And, and I explain this over and over until somebody really tells me that I'm wrong. How did we spend $130 million and 10,000 kids to educate 10,000 kids and we all, the other 70 or 80,000 people survive on the same budget? I don't understand. I, I you know, I, I don't because from that 130 thousand uh, million dollars left, we pay for everything else. We pay for 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 um, for trash. We we pay for um, police and fire and, and and you call it. And the only thing that they don't even maintain the buildings. No. We do mm. maintain the buildings. So how can they spend half? Of a city budget to educate ten uh, to educate pretty much ten percent 
of the people? You know, it's, it's a question that's been asked a lot of me um, since, I, since I've been, um, you know, voted in and on the campaign trail about the educational aspect of it. Um, I've been also asked my opinion on the superintendent considering I'm not on the school committee. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have raised a concern to me that the school department's budget is a major concern that nobody seems to have the courage to address. Mm -hmm. And I'm not necessarily <clears throat> concerned with the fact that we appropriate so much money to the education of our, of our students and mm -hmm. our children of forever. I'm more concerned with the way that the money is spent. Mm -hmm. I've campaigned from day one making sure that, and I'm going to make sure of this, and you can hold me, my feet to the fire when we're going, when we're down to budget season, I want to make sure that the money that we allocate to net school spending is going to our children. Mm -hmm. It's been often understood, and if you look at the budget, it's clearly there for the, on the school side that you have department head after department head, administrator after administrator, consultant after consultant who continuously get pay raises and continuously make great money in our school system as we have a third grade at, uh, at the Tansy School that has 32 children in it and one teacher. Mm -hmm. That's a concern to me. Absolutely. And it's a concern to me the way we spend the money on the school side. However, the city of Forver elected school committee members and a chairman and a new mayor to battle on that. Mm -hmm. Do I think there's going to be a battle between the sixth floor and the school side? I think so. I think, it's, I think there's going to be a lot of tough decisions that are going to need to be mm -hmm. made. But funding education is a, is a top priority. But we need to make sure that the money that the city council allocates to meeting net school spending mm -hmm. is going to the children in our classroom. Mm -hmm. And I will ask the superintendent, whether it's Meg Mayo Brown or uh, somebody who's going to succeed her, that I'm going to want to make sure of that. And I want to see in paper and in writing that, that the money's going towards mm -hmm. our children. One thing, uh, and uh, interrupt me any time that you have a question, <coughs> Bernadette. Um, one thing that I would like to really happen and uh, finding out by experience from the past is the budget comes in a week before the, 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 the had to be a decision needs to be made. I think the new city councils, and we have five new city councils sitting at the table this time, I really want them to engage right on the first meeting. I want to start seeing numbers. I want to start seeing budget. Because if, if it's something there that needs to be changed, I have six months to change it. And I don't want the excuse that now we don't have time, you have to approve it the way it is on the table. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I was watching, um, I've been doing so much homework. Last night I was actually watching old city council meetings um, back in, you know, going into the budget budget uh, season last year they approved and the council was had a gun to its head you know you need to approve it mm -hmm. on the eight I, I believe it was the 18th of June mm -hmm. or on Monday mm -hmm. we have layoffs that are mm -hmm. coming down mm -hmm. and those hearings begin mm -hmm. um, shame on the administration mm -hmm. and shame on the City Council for not asking for this budget and these and meetings time. to occur mm -hmm. now there's been some discussion with um, uh, with a couple of uh, uh, new counselors and veteran counselors to create a brand new subcommittee to the city council um, uh, separate to the committee on finance that um, um, will um, have uh, something to do with audit and budget mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that's going to be definitely beneficial uh, with this council coming around I, I believe that there's some uh, opportunity that we would have we can have the administration come down uh, present the facts each department head. I, I, I've always felt, and, and I'm going to I'm going to hold the administration accountable for doing this. Um, is I would like to see each department head come before, whether it's the committee on finance or if if it's a subcommittee to the city council, to have a needs, a wants, and what they're going to be expecting from the city council in the next 12 to 24 months. You know, because if there's departments when we're in, we're in a time of need where there's some departments that may have some flexibility to do some cuts. Mm -hmm then let's hear about it today. Mm -hmm. Let's hear about it today if the fire chief and the fire union come down and say, look, our apparatus is at the end of its useful life. We have this concern, we have this concern, and this concern. If we know about it in June, or in, rather in January, 
then when we have a, well, we're ready to pass a budget, it's not a surprise to us. Right. Mm -hmm. And it happened. It's happened for years and years and years and years. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so I would really like to see each department head come before the council, the committee on finance, or a subcommittee that we decide to have, and I'd like to hear what their wants, needs, mm -hmm. and what they could do without. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we're at a financial, you know, uh, situation where, look, if, if, if a family of four has a mortgage payment to make, utilities to make, uh, to pay, uh, and all these different things, you can't afford to go on a tropical vacation to Hawaii. Right. right. You know, so families are cutting. We need to start living within our means, mm -hmm. and, and I, I intend to hold the administration accountable mm -hmm. for doing that. Um, <coughs> and, uh, and I would like to see our city councils get more involved on the school budget. I, I, I would like to see that as well, but, you know, I remember um, back when, and I'm not sure if this has occurred since, and I, I could have missed it, I could have, um, but uh, when, when Superintendent Fisher was here, um, I recall that there was a joint meeting, I believe at uh, Cuss or Morton or Talbot, uh, between the city council and the school side. And it, it wasn't necessarily a friendly meeting, but it was a meeting between the two bodies mm -hmm. to discuss the school department's budget. Yes. Because at the end of the day, even though the city council only says, yes, we're going to appropriate X amount of money in net school spending, as an elected official and a taxpayer, we have every right to question what they're doing with mm -hmm, their money. Absolutely. However, we need to be uh, not only careful but respective of the fact that there is a school committee that is elected, mm -hmm. and it is the school committee's responsibility to make sure they live within their means of their budget but, as well. But remember one thing, Cliff. If somebody's going to save us a hundred thousand dollars from a school budget, it's going to be our city councils. Mm -hmm. That that cut will never come from the school committee. That cut will come and will be funded mm -hmm. from our city councils because they are our voice. Mm -hmm. You know, like the when they look voice. through those books, everybody sitting on the school department, the the mayor and the uh, and, and and the uh, um, and whatever's gonna work f now instead of make me around. They, they're not gonna, they don't wanna use the pen to take any numbers out of that budget, mm -hmm. okay? It's our city councils that has to take a look and see why are we paying three people to do this job? Sure. And, and you know, I heard the superintendent on the radio actually say um, that the school department is actually gonna be seeking 104% of net school spending this mm -hmm. coming fiscal year. We struggle to meet 100% of that school spending <laughs> mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so you know, there's going to be some tough decisions. Absolutely. That, that and and I, absolutely. I heard and I heard uh, a city council uh, uh, long, city council long that that he, he's he's right when when he says and and that's exactly what he was saying is if a person that are in low income and and the kid is uh, um, getting uh, help. Or, or free lunch or whatever they call it at the mm -hmm. school. Um, if that family moved down from Brockton, okay, that that paperwork never got transferred to Fall River. So we're not getting paid from that family that moved down to our city. Mm -hmm. So it, it is a lot of cracks out there, you know, and, and a lot of things are falling through nice. those cracks. And, and instead of us getting, you know, so little money, we probably should, we should be getting a lot more money right. with all these people moving into right. our city mm -hmm. with low income. Well, it's, it's up to our uh, elected officials, the mayor and the city council and school committee to advocate to the delegation, our state reps, mm -hmm. to see if we can get more money exactly. uh, to so, Fall River. So uh, I'm sure I, every, dime, every dime will help. I was, I was, happy, I was happy with that. Um, uh, um, our next uh, uh, week, we're going to be talking about um, a lot of things that I've been just questioning about. And I would like to ask you a couple of questions. Yeah, of course. It's, it's a yes or no questions. And okay. we're going to be going through the questions and go more detail on the um, questions that I just throw here on the paper. Um, now that we're going through this, uh, the, the, the charter of uh, city uh, charter review, um, a yes or no on the mayor, a two year or four year? A uh, four year term. A four year term? I agree. You agree? Two years is not enough time. I like a two year. Why? <laughs> 
Why? why, why? I, I'm curious because uh. I'm curious to hear, you know, I've been following the Charter Commission. Uh, I've been going to the meetings, um, and uh, I, I'm hearing that, you know, from from previous mayors and from the community that and a four-year term is And it's very simple, and I'm going to explain very simple why mm -hmm. I, I agreed with two-year. We had had mayors in the city serving four terms. If the mayor's been serving four terms, he's definitely doing a good job, and people want to see the end of it, mm -hmm. the project that he started. And then we had mayors that didn't even f finish one year. Mm -hmm. That's how bad he was. Right. So if we're going to turn the two year to a four year, can you imagine if if we cannot get the recalls going to, to replace a mayor? At least a two year term, at least we only have to deal with the mayor two year. And if he's good, if people want to give him another chance, another two years, and, and we've been seeing, when people go to vote, they always think about, should I give him another chance? That's the question that every mayor has, mm -hmm. is, and, and that's what he runs for, mm -hmm. and it's hoping people's gonna give me a chance to do another term, okay? Right. So if we turn into a four year, I think it's gonna be, if the mayor's good, it's good, but if the mayor's bad, then we have a four year of a bad mayor. And every two years to be knocking on people's doors t to collect, you know, uh, 7,000 signatures, it's not easy. Yeah. Um, so if uh, it's like me being president of my neighborhood. If I'm doing a good job, people are gonna keep me. If I'm not doing a bad job, somebody, some other neighbor's gonna come in and say, you know, I'm gonna create, uh, I'm gonna create a, another, uh, 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 office kind right. of people and we're gonna take over yeah he got the votes he wins I lose mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so as long as as long as I keep up my work and I mean and I do what I'm supposed to do I don't have nothing to worry about it and I can stay for as long as I want right yeah. the okay? only issue I have with that is okay so it's an it's a two-year term mm -hmm. okay so you just won the election mm -hmm. okay so if you really think about it he's only gonna be um, working one year working that one year yes because it takes a lot to run a campaign mm -hmm. a, as you oh, know okay sure does. your energy kind of veers away from let's say moving the city forward mm -hmm. okay so now which one do you which one do you put your, your your full attention on do you put it on moving the city forward or do you put it on getting elected to that I understand second term so why don't so we ask those that served four terms how they did it Oh, they did it the same way that I'm they talking about. They did it the they, same they, way that right. the, the guy that w the lost with just two terms. Mm. It's, I mean, you have to be the genius. Yeah. You have to be the guy. Right. You have to be the right person right. to do it. Or else people are just going to put you in the air for four years and forget about it. <laughs> about you. You know, you, so, I mean, again, and all my ideas and all my things could be changed. Sure. Right. If people prove me that, that I'm wrong. Right, right, right. Um, Stronger mayor or stronger city council? Stronger city council. Um, I'm going to say city council as well. I'm going to say stronger mayor. Boy, we're... we're, we're <laughs> The opposites <laughs> today. We're not thinking yeah. like today, that's no. for sure. <laughs> stronger mayor. Yeah, stronger So mayor. you agree one person being stronger than the whole nine together? No, because remember, city council has more power today that the mayor has. See, I, has I disagree with that. City I disagree. Council, city council has nine votes. The mayor, it's only one vote. Right, but how many but times? Still, but how many times does that one vote not need a nine a nine body vote? No, because personally, they have to agree. I think they need more power. No, uh, here's the thing: is I'm going to call Cliff. Cliff, I have something going on the city council tonight. I want you to pass. That, that's, that's the bad part. Well, the yes. is, is, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, I don't agree to it. Right, right. And that's it, I'm gonna vote yeah. against. And hopefully there's nine strong and independent. Exactly, exactly. that's what not, we need. Right, because we need a, we need in the in past, the, yes, there's been. An independent correct. city council, but right. a stronger mayor. Correct, yeah. Okay. That's your opinion. Yeah. Okay, again, yeah, you know, could be changed. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, I just think that we're in a situation now where um, the city council votes obviously as a body, 
Mm -hmm. If I want to present a resolution to, uh, uh, at the first city council meeting, I can present the resolution uh, in, a, in a form of a resolution to be approved by my colleagues, but the mayor still needs to sign off on it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, we could go back and forth at the end of the day in terms of say, okay, well, look, the council has this power and the mayor has this power. Um, the, you know, uh, you can look at it the opposite way. Mm -hmm. The mayor can't approve his budget without council approval. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, is, is there power between both both the executive branch and mm -hmm. the legislative branch, sure. But uh, the so mayor can't get any just, much done without council approval, exactly. but the council really can't get much done without the mayor's sign off, in, in some cases. In some cases. I mean, but I, in most <laughs> cases, in most cases, it's, it's the city council that has the power right now. Yeah. A, a, you 90 percent. You could, you could break it down. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. We, we could talk about different Correct. different parts. But yeah, it, it comes out even. It, I think. <laughs> um, bonding for the transfer station. We got a lot of votes. Um, overwhelming support, actually. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Overwhelming. Are support. you in favor or against? I'm in favor. I mean, uh, right now, with the information that you have right Based now. Based on the information that I provided, and I've also mentioned this at my at my council forums, that I'm in favor of a transfer station. Um, if we are going to bond to uh, for the creation of a transfer station, uh, and it's going to bring us a return back on our investment, um, granted, I'm, I have very limited knowledge about that, but I think it's an option that we need to explore. I've said it on the campaign trail, I'll say today, and I'll say when I'm in the chamber, that all options need to be on the table for this trash mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. Obviously, pay as you throw isn't effective. It hasn't met its expectations or projections for two straight fiscal years. Okay, mm -hmm. the $10 fee is an attack on the homeowner. You can't go to that mother who's living on uh, on a fixed income and say, "Listen, uh, you're going to use one bag of trash today, this 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 week, mm -hmm. right. but you're going to pay ten dollars." But that family who had uh, 75 people over their house for Christmas and they have all this trash and they're paying to use their trash and they're still paying the same same fee, it, 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 it's just the whole way the city, the council, and the mayor went about. This trash issue has been a disaster from the very beginning. You know, there was no way to go after fees. There was no way to go after uh, noncompliance. It, it was just a disaster, mm -hmm. and it hasn't been effective. There was no educational excitement to this at all whatsoever. Mm -hmm. There's no educational training. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just been it's been awful. Um, Route 79. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you saw the end of it? Design. Uh, the the uh, the engineered plans yes. I have yes okay. I have seen them are you happy with the design um, I haven't looked that closely at it to be able to you know from, from what I'm seeing my understanding and I could be wrong um, uh, I'm shooting right off the hip here um, <laughs> I, I believe that's going to open up acres of land my memory is serving me correctly that the city will will, will that's what they sold that's how they sold us seventy nine. But on an actually plan, I never saw that. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, I never saw that. Remember, they moved from t two highway level down to two highway down. How how you get land? I don't understand. Yeah, I look it's at still that. spaghetti's rant. Very good. Um, and it's the end of well, one more fast. week. Thank you, and uh, I see you guys next week. Thank you, Cliff, for coming. You're welcome. And thank you, Bernadette, for coming again. Thank you.